Good Tuesday morning everyone. Today we're going to talk about the new 8-speed dual clutch transmission. Uh, as with the last videos, we're going to look through the photo, see what we notice, and see what we can determine just based on the photographs. Alright, so now let's start over here with the input shaft right here. Now obviously this is where the actual torque converter would go if it was an automatic. Uh, I'm still a little fuzzy on the actual connection point, whether it's a similar to a damper uh, like a lot of our hybrids have. Uh, I really don't know the connection point, so that I'm very interested in. All right, now let's look down over here a little bit. This right here, I believe, is probably a fluid pump of some type. The reason why I feel that way is because we have this tube that goes right up here into a oil cooler and it's a heat exchanger essentially and if we look at this it looks very very similar to some of the heat exchangers we have on engines obviously LT1, LT4, uh, a previous LS9 uh, uh, we've had those and they all look the same stacked, inter uh, stacked heat exchanger uh, with some type of coolant in and out of the actual exchanger and now look more toward the back we can definitely see that this is an output shaft. Now this six bolt mounting flange is very, very similar to what we use on transfer cases for rear propeller shafts. Uh, I think they're definitely using some type of six bolt axle shaft or half shaft as it were uh, to the rear wheels. Uh, and it makes sense that the differential is right there. Uh, obviously for positioning. Now you could see an access cover here and right back here, I believe this is our mounting point where it goes to a subframe of some type with a uh, possibly a rubber mount, something along those lines. Now, one thing I did notice is the length. If you look at the actual length of the, if you look at the actual length of the transmission, it's pretty long. But here's something to think about here. Let's take a look at the Tremec T9070. Now this is another dual clutch transmission. The reason why I'm bringing this up is I wanted to show you some of the insides. I believe the theory is extremely similar. I believe they're doing something that's very, very close to this. Now, if you look right up over here, all right, these are the dual clutches, right there. You have one clutch, which is right here. Then you have a second clutch, which is right here. Now, right in this area here, that looks to be a fluid control solenoid of some type. But what I wanted to show you is that if you look, input shaft, very large, two clutches. Okay, so the input shaft drives both clutches. Back here, everything looks like a normal manual transmission. Very, very, very simple to operate. One synchronizer hub right here and it will go either this way to engage one gear or this way to engage another gear. Now look, <clears throat> this is how dual clutches work. Think of it as two transmissions with four gears per shaft. Now this one is an actual seven speed, but the principle still remains the same. And I think what we're gonna find is that the way the programming is for this unit, they were talking at the reveal about shift timing. Uh, so if you have one clutch here, let's say this clutch is for first gear, right? If you have one clutch that's full on and you're accelerating, if you start to bring the second clutch on as this is releasing, that creates faster shift times. So this one goes off as this one comes on to your next gear. See, that's the principle behind dual clutch and that's the reason why it works so well. Fluid timing, fluid control in this area right here is going to be the key because as power transfer occurs, this, everything in here, is all gear mesh to mesh contact. So it's always con connected until the synchronizer slides across and actually does the engagement point before the clutch over here takes hold. Thank you very much, everyone. And we'll look into more things tomorrow. Bye-bye.